Hi everyone, sorry about the uh, delay in recording. I've been away commentating in Gibraltar, as some of you may well be aware. Now, I'm bringing you a story of highs and lows with this video, uh, of extremes, extreme beautifulness and rather craziness in maybe not such a beautiful way. And this is the story, the tales and woe of one Chinese world champion, Ho Yifan. Now, Ho Yifan, uh, who you can see here, is an unbelievably brilliant player. And also an unbelievably, uh, I would say, great person to have in chess to inspire generation of males and females alike to improve in her steps. And she was playing in the Gibraltar Congress this year. Now, you may or may or not have heard about the controversy. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the controversy, um, but I also want to show you her, the best game she played in Gibraltar, which won the best game prize, was an unbelievably beautiful game. Now, Ho Yifang, in the last round, played the following game with the white pieces. Now, look at this game. I was commentating live with the lovely Yifanka Huska, and Ho Yifang had the white pieces, and she went G4. And after d5, she played f3. Now, not even my uh, two-year-old, uh, should I say, goddaughter would play as badly as this with white. And the game lasted a couple of moves. e5, d3. Now, I know I've played the so-called transvestite variation and a lot of other rubbish on occasions myself, but playing it in such a high-level tournament is controversial to say the least. And after check, king d2, h5, h3, pawn takes g4, Ho Yifan, the woman's world champion, one of the best female players in, in the history of chess, resigned on move 5. Can you Adam and Eve it? Now, what the hell was this about? Well, it, it was a way of her protesting in her own way, about the amount of females she played in a tournament. She wasn't happy playing seven females out of ten rounds. Now, the protests, I mean, was this right? The simple answer is no, it wasn't right. Because protests like this can affect the tournament, it can affect the reputation of the tournament, it can affect the tournament for future years. Sponsors don't want to have trouble, they don't want to have controversy like this, and it really could put, you know, a lot of people's livelihood in, in trouble. And poor old tournament director Stuart Conquest didn't like this. Now, I have to admire also her rebellious streak. She had a bee in her bonnet and she stuck to her guns and she lost in style, like punk chess. You know, the Sex Pistols or some other hardcore punk band would have done a similar thing. Screw the world. I'm going to make my point. I don't care. You know. God save the queen. You know what I mean? It's a, it's, it's a punk. It's a punk gesture. But, you know, is this right for chess? I appreciate the punk gesture, but there were so many better ways to do it. And we all, you know, I, I mean, me for one, I've made enough mistakes like this, maybe worse things myself. So I'm not one to judge too much, but she is the women's world champion. So I'll leave it to you what you think of that. This is way, her way of protesting about the amount of ladies she played. Now, I should say the draw was done incredibly fairly. It was done properly. It's been confirmed it was done properly. In Gibraltar, they encourage female players. So you might play a lot of females. You have to get on with it. Um, but this protest has really put a bit of a downer on some of it. And I think the tournament has handled it brilliantly. And it is a brilliant tournament. Now, to counter that, the low, the Ho Yi Fang low, the bottom of despair, let me show you some brilliancy that she also created. And I want to show you what was actually awarded the best game prize. I and mean, you must honour the um, organisers of Gibraltar. Even after this um, real controversy in the last round, they still awarded Ho Yi Fang the best game prize, which apparently she didn't turn up to collect. Oh dear, it gets worse, the punk, the punk style. One warning, if you want to be a punk, that's okay. But you are going to be looked at funny and you are going to be treated differently. Hence the definition of being a punk. So, you know, I admire the spirit. Was it right? I don't know. I'll leave it to you to discuss in the comments. But let me show you another game. And this was awarded the best game prize. And oh my words, was it fantastic or what? She was black. Now, I'm not going to go through it in, in too much detail. 
except to say that she played a fairly solid Queen's Indian setup. We're going to look at it from her point of view. And she did a double fianchetto system here. And this is a, a perfectly respectable way of playing. And the game started very normally with both sides developing in standard measure. Ho Yi Fan playing a kind of hippopotamus and later on she wants to advance with E5. White also playing standard moves and now Ho Yi Fan comes with, should we say, a Dutch kind of setup like the Christmas tree Dutch. A setup I, I enjoy a lot myself and uh, with ideas of going E5 and F4 but also White is fine. Now D5, very interesting idea, had a specific, I, a specific concept in mind. This would not be a good idea generally because of e5. And if you see my Dutch videos, you know I love this kind of pawn formation. And I think black has fantastic attacking chances in this kind of structure. But now white tried the very interesting g4. Very double-edged move. If you move pawns in front of your king, you can make a lot of weaknesses. Black took on g4, retreated the knight to the only square. And now we see white's idea, knight to g5. And White's concept is to bring the knight into e6, which looks kind of unstoppable. Because if knight to c5, there's a b4 in the air. Now in this position, we now see one of the most magnificent queen sacrifices of at least the last couple of years. It's a brilliant positional sacrifice. And this just shows the beauty that also Ho Yi Fang can create. You know, what a, you know, we saw her punk this. Now look at the beauty. Knight takes d5. Now the idea of this is to unleash the queen towards the knight on g5. So if white recaptures on d5, then uh, obviously we take the knight. We've won a pawn. So there's only one move. Knight to e6. And here, white must have thought he was doing very well. But look at this move. Knight takes c3. And now white takes the queen. This is all very forcing. Knight takes e2 check. Queen takes... What has black got for the queen? At the moment, only one minor piece. But of course, the knight here is going to be recaptured and black will have two minor pieces. Now, if you recapture the knight straight away, white will go f3 and this will block out your bishop and white is better here. So Ho Yi Fang now played a very good intermezzo and move in the middle, bishop to f3. And after the queen moves, she now took back, well, okay, she flicks in this move first to attack the queen. The queen has to move, and she now took back the knight. And this is what she foresaw, and this is just simply brilliant. This reminds me of the great, the greatest queen sacrifices. If you can remember this queen sacrifice, I think it was Nepa, uh, um, I've forgotten his name, Nez, Neza, you know who I mean, one of Tao's precessors. This is just like it. It reminds me of that game. It's brilliant. You have... A bishop and a knight and a pawn for the queen. Clearly not enough. But the bishop here controls the king. It really does shut that king away. Great bishop. And the bishop on h2 is rubbish. And it's a positional queen sacrifice. White is really pushed to find a plan. And black just grinds away. Brilliant, brilliant concept. Now let's just fast forward a little bit. They manoeuvre about. Black obviously keeps a bishop here. There's no point in rushing to take a pawn because then white would play f3. So keep the bind. And now look what happens. Rook e1, trying to swap off that bishop. But now bishop h6, bringing another piece into the game. And what needs to happen now? This knight needs to find a good, good route. b4. And again, white is probably okay if black takes on e4. But black finds a much more positional idea. The knight comes to the outpost on d4. Beautiful manoeuvring. And the queen is looking quite helpless. c5, in comes the knight. And again, let's just go through the middle game moves quite quickly because they dance about a little bit. Ho Yi Fang playing very slowly, just proving that the queen can't do anything. White cannot get into the position. The bishop can't get in. The rooks can't get in. The queen can't get into black's position. Bishop g3. Bishop g5, stopping that bishop trying to get in. And also, what is one of the best manoeuvres that black has? Well, you can probably guess it. It's going to be the h-pawn going. Now, black thinks it's time to take on g4 because the f3 square is very well covered. White can't play f3. Rook d1, trying to offer the rook. And a lot of mere humans would take that rook. But then you lose one of your best pieces. So Ho Yifang just wants to keep control. 
Knight to F3 check. Fantastic. No rush to win back material. King moves, and now here comes Harry. H5. And this pawn is coming all the way up to start a devastating attack. Queen A2 check. The king moves. Queen comes in. And now Rook comes to just defend E5. But look at what happens very shortly. White is kind of making a little bit of pro progress because you've got the open file, some pressure over here. But black is concentrating everything on the king's side. Rook d3, Harry 4. Bishop h2, taking on a4. And now, again, white has to take that pawn. A little bit of maneuvering now. So let's just see. Black slowly getting her pieces all over on the king's side. So something is bound to happen. And it's all about this f3 square. This f3 square is fantastic. There's ideas of taking the bishop and going bishop f4. There's many ideas. Queen b2. And now we have a little bit of dancing about here. Because they're probably in time trouble. And we get to the critical position. So first of all, this is, this is now the next part. Ho Yi Fang now takes on h2. And this is where the fun really starts. Now, what is the problem with king takes h2? Well, it should be quite easy to see that now bishop f4 check is a fantastic move. And if king h1, bishop f3 check, king here, harry 2 checkmate. I mean, what? this is the kind of game I dream of having. Checkmate. And if the king goes to g1 instead in this position, so king g1, we first play bishop to f3. And again, there's no stopping h2 checkmate. Fantastic. So what does white do? White thinks, oh, hang on a minute, I've got rook takes e5. I'm starting a counterattack. I'm threatening a discovered check. Wherever white moves the rook, taking the bishop, taking the rook, it's going to be a discovered check. Surely that's good. And now look at this next piece of brilliancy. Bishop to f3 check. If you take the knight, well, there is bishop f4 check and we take the rook. This is clearly going to be good for black. So king to g1 force. And now one of the most amazing moves I've ever seen. Knight takes f1. Leaving your rook to be captured with a double check. This is one of the only times in chess I've seen such an idea. And black figures out that the attack with h2, Harry is going to win the game. So let's see what Ho Yi Fang had very cleverly calculated. Rook takes e7 check. Double check. So... Black has sacrificed the double check of a rook. The king has to run. The queen comes in check. How scary does this look? Ho Yi Fang has worked out that the king is actually safe on g4. Fantastic. And the idea of h2 is incredibly strong. So if king takes f1, now Ho Yi Fang would swap plans and go rook b8. And there's an unstoppable threat of rook to b1 checkmate. Fantastic. So the white king is stuck in a mating net. So white tried rook to e8 with the idea of getting a check, but this doesn't work. Rook takes rook. Queen d7 check. The king moves. And now, well, what other options are there? If you take the rook, h2, h1, checkmate. So you have to take the knight. But after rook d8, this rook is coming to d1. Queen comes in with check. King g4 and white resigned. Fantastic, because there's no way to stop rook d1 checkmate. So, I mean, that was just a simply brilliant game. One of the best games of chess I've seen. And it all started with this queen sacrifice, knight takes d5. With this idea of getting two pieces for the queen, but having this lock on the white king's side. This is one of the, you know, fantastic sacrifice, positional compensation. This is, shows a very high level understanding. You understand that white can't come into your position. White can't get active. You can build up the pressure. And then later on, we saw this idea here of allowing rook takes rook double check. We saw this idea of knight takes f1, allowing rook to e7 check. How many people would honestly allow that idea? Not many. So there we go. That is the highs and lows of Ho Yi Fang. And we could say the shit hit the Ho Yi Fang there. I hope you enjoyed the video and well I'd like to let like to let you you know like to get your opinion on those two highs and lows
brilliant and maybe something not so brilliant, but, you know, that game is simply great. And all credit to Gibraltar organisers for still awarding the best game prize to Ho Yi Fang for that game. It's a brilliant tournament, Gibraltar. I recommend everyone goes there, you know, and the, the organisers are so friendly. So it's a pity this event happened here. But do you think it brings it into disrepute? Do you think it's a good punk punk thing to do? I don't know. Thanks for watching. I'll be back with more videos soon. Please like and subscribe. Bye for now.